Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please adjust your viewing settings if you're not having a pleasant streaming experience. You can use the three dots at the top or there's a little cog icon at the back and you can adjust your settings there. To those who need closed captions on these videos, unfortunately the closed captions will not be available for about 24 to maybe even 48 hours after a video depending on the length of the video so unfortunately they're not e available immediately but once youtube catches up to what i'm saying they usually appear at the bottom i would also like to always mention that playlists is the best way to get um, the best out of this channel. If you are someone who is looking for particular information, I have medical information about the harm that causes harm, what God had to say about that. You'll find it under the title. It's simply titled Prophecies. The most important play playlists on this channel are the Russia and China playlists. Uh, there's about 21 prophecies there and also the Sin series. That series is an eye-opening look into things that many people do not know that is taking place here in the nation of America, that is taking place around the world, what God has to say about the fact that people no longer have fear of the Lord. They no longer even care that there is God. This world has headed greatly backwards to following after themselves as gods, elevating themselves as centers of worship. God spoke to me a few years back and told me that many of these social medias are basically just centers of worship where each person sets up their own little altar or shrine to themselves, puts pictures there, loads things there, and then proceeds to worship themselves and is working very hard to gain the likes and approval of other people. In other words, having other people come and worship at their altar too. And so the Sin series gives a very in-depth look about things that God says that the nation of America is guilty of, things that he will punish most severely. This is an end times prophecy channel. Everything that I am handling here is coming direct from the Lord Jesus Christ. I received this information through dreams and through visions and through open eye teaching during which when the Lord is giving me his instruction and his revelations and understanding, I very often see pictures. And today's prophecy is one such, one such. So the last thing I will cover is the fact that people ask, how can they support the channel? People want to know where is the blog in the first place? I've been saying this for a while now that all that information can be found in the description box just below. Just look where you see the channel name, stay on the same name line with the channel name and you'll see a tiny little V. Click that V and it drops down what is known as the description box. And there you can find out how to support the channel. There you can find out about each video. There is always a little description about every video and there is a link to follow it back to the blog for that particular message. After that, you can use the blog because the blog has menus with something like playlists, menus that show you Russia and China's menu that shows you the harm that causes harm, that shows you the supernatural things that we're talking about. And today I'm back in the supernatural series, which I still had not finished. And the title of today's message is the gray aliens of the future. I received this message. May the 10th, 2020. So this prophecy is more than two years old because it has already passed May 10th, 2022. Would also like to note that the Master's Boys Prophecy blog is a healthy three years old. Started this work for the Lord officially that is bringing these things out in public. May 28th or May 29, 2019. So it has been quite a learning experience, quite an experience all told, especially when I moved to video, but the Lord is my help and he has sustained me and brought me this far. So I give all the glory to God for this channel, for growing it, for teaching his people. And hopefully somebody out there is listening and will be minded to follow more closely in the footsteps of Jesus Christ as they stay with this channel. So gray aliens, we are talking about the infamous slash famous stars of multiple movies, series, channels over the last 30 to 40 years at least. The banner scripture for today's message is this. 
If a man or a woman living among you in one of the towns that the Lord gives you is found doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God in violation of his covenant and contrary to my command has worshipped other gods, bowing down to them or to the sun or the moon or the stars in the sky, and this has been brought to your attention, then you must investigate it thoroughly. If it is true, and it has been proved that this detestable thing has been done in Israel, take the man or woman who has done this evil deed to your city gate and stone that person to death. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 2 to 5. So um, people like to avoid scriptures like this, and then uh, scriptures like this also are a reason that people say, oh, I won't worship God and I won't follow God. God is too bloodthirsty. Just bear in mind that God has very strong feelings the same way that everybody has strong feelings. And one of the things that God feels very strongly about is who is worthy to be worshipped? The answer is very simple. Nobody except God himself. God is the source of life. God is the genesis of all living. God is the origin point. And when all that is called humanity, all that is called daily life is said and done, guess who will be standing taking all the glory and praise and honor for himself alone? That's right. God, Jesus alone will stand as prince and king and God and everything at the end of time. And so God has the right to prescribe that nobody should worship anything except him. We're not to worship other gods. We're not to worship depictions of God, gods. We're not to worship particular ideas. We're not to par worship particular themes that we may come up with through history from time to time. The Lord says that if any kind of worship, any kind of exaltation or adulation is brought to our attention, we are to investigate the matter thoroughly. And if it can be proved that someone in our midst has done this, excuse me, please. If it can be proved that someone in our midst has done this, that person should be taken to the very edge of our grouping, our society, and stoned to death. So God is expressing here that idolatry is worthy of death. But it's also a warning, especially for our present times. I noted under this prophecy that we no longer stone people to death. But in the end times, people will stone themselves to death because of the evil choices they make. And because they will have a very high esteem and worship and desire and lust in their heart for following after these false gods of glory. And so I was sharing here in this prophecy, in the introduction, that most Christians and almost everybody else is not really minded or ready to take these types of prophecies to heart. Because in the Christian community, this type of stuff is touched on next to never. So the Christian community is, if I'm honest, at the very back of the line when it comes to knowing and understanding what God is talking about when he shares about powerful beings coming and living in our midst, powerful beings that will come and demonstrate um, abilities and things like that, powerful beings that have no genesis in Christ himself. So we are a Christ-made organism, God-made man. There's our story in the Bible, but then... There's a secondary story in the Bible that you can find in Genesis 6. And the creatures that stem from that story call themselves many different things. And one of the ones that we will be looking at in this word is aliens. And so I said that, you know, alien channels, alien movies, alien documentaries are not fun for me because, first of all, I know it's true. A lot of people will uh, um, approach this type of stuff, this type of channel. They'll be thinking, what is this person talking about? There's no such thing as aliens and everything and someone to show a higher knowledge and, oh, they're demons and whatever. And it really doesn't matter because a lot of people do not even have the basic acceptance that anything else exists except us and our pets and the animals we see at the zoo and the things that we can perceive with the eyes. But if you come to this channel and you watch long enough, especially the Supernatural series, you will understand that God is saying it is actually the Christian's responsibility to wake up and know that there are, there is a complete other life. So this is not even a down low person. This is, this is the fact that there is a complete other world outside of the world that can be perceived with the eyes, handled with the hands and heard and uh, spoken about or touched in a tangible form. There are things that are not inside our daily paradigm as people. And God is 
expressly telling Christians and expressly just telling humanity that you live ignorant of this world at your peril. I didn't say that at your harm. I said at your peril, which means that you put your very life and the lives of those you love in jeopardy by remaining ignorant of this. And then another reason that I do not enjoy alien information, which is which is starting to increase out there, is because not only do people still argue about is it true or is it not true, it is true, but then a lot of information is left out. So people are always talking about how they're going to come and share information and they're always talking about how they're going to come and be a blessing and be part of what causes humanity to ascend out of humanity's um, bare essential type of life. We're so base and we're so low and we're so aggressive. And when they come, they're going to help us align our chakras and tune our vibrations to the universe. And we're going to be these higher beings. I can tell you that there's no former, there's no higher form of existing than being a child of God and coming to the knowledge of Christ Jesus, repenting of your sin. It is pointless to aspire to be a God when you are still plagued with sin. Even the gods that are offering us the lesser gods, so to speak, godhood, are in sin themselves. And I said that when something is in sin and when something is cursed, all it can offer you is what it is, which is to become sinful and to become accursed. So let us be wise about who we're following. So they leave out essential um, information. And one of the things that God talked about is how these aliens do eat people. They do eat people, but you never see this in the movie because apparently the, the aliens get on the bicycle and cycle little boys around and all kinds of things. This is what aliens do. They come and they're helpers and they bring technology and they bring wisdom, but nobody ever talks about how they're bringing their knives and forks to reduce the population of the earth. But this is a theme that God never gets away with and gets away from and most of the prophecies on the master's voice that speak of aliens will always speak about how aliens are going to be the means by which people will die in great numbers very great numbers they are going to greatly reduce the population of this earth because we are what they eat and the third thing is that when you do see something that shows the real nature of aliens whereby they are aggressive and they are evil, it's always carefully managed into this good versus bad thing. So they will always bring the bad aliens and show what the bad aliens do and follow it up by having the good guys burst on the scene and the good guys will explain to us because we are always ignorant and in the dark in these movies. These bad aliens have come from this and this and this place and they are very bad and, and you cannot allow them to overtake the world. They have had this plan to overtake and destroy the world for this amount of time. And so we're here to help you. And then these good aliens get in the mix and they fight the bad aliens because obviously the bad aliens have greater power, greater ability, greater skill, greater weapons weapons, greater supernatural power. And so we need these good savior. I'm making the fingers again. We need these good saviors to jump into the fight and push them off and save us. And because TV puts it like this, Nobody ever notices that after the bad aliens are beaten and cast back through the portal or cast back into the ring and then thrown in the sea or wherever they came from, that the good ones stay behind and live here with us on earth. That's right. TV is constantly showing us the future of a blended society whereby we live with creatures, beings, and entities. But because they're the good ones, it's okay. Society becomes better. I think there is this movie where um, this theme is in the movies a lot. Transformers is one of them. And if I remember, if I have time, I will just share a little bit about that at the end. Also, how to train your dragon. So there's always this fight. And then afterwards, it always shows us humanity accepting some form of alien to live with us. It always shows integration and blending. And God has been saying that this will be a part of the end times. I know a lot of people are hoping that they will be with Jesus before that happens, but this is not the channel of dreams. And I will speak about that. So aliens are cruel and manipulative. They're not from God and we should have nothing to do with them when the time is forced upon us. They feed on humanity, yes, they steal people and they torture them in experiments because they see us as basically inferior life forms, kind of the way we see flies and cockroaches. And so there is a prophecy and the name of that prophecy is the human alien hybrid question. 
And in that word, the Lord mentioned that the greys take genetic material. They are interested in genetic material from people. This is sperm from men and eggs from women. And they take that and they mix it with themselves. And then they implant those embryos back into women. Please listen carefully. You might have even seen this in movies if you're one of those who's out there watching these types of movies because I know that this information is clearly put in front of people. God is always talking about it. I do not have to go out and search for it. He is always saying that this information is put before people, but they watch it as entertainment because they think that nothing on TV could possibly be true. And yet nothing could be further from the truth. So these aliens take genetic material and yet they do not sleep with people. They are simply interested in using our genetic data to multiply themselves and to fine tune the process of trying to make a supernatural hybrid being that looks like us on the outside but retains all their skills, all their abilities, all their gifts, all their um, supernatural ability to talk with the mind without speaking and things like that. They want to make better and better and better versions of themselves by mixing us with them, but they are not interested in actually physically touching the female or physically touching the male because gray aliens actually see us as very inferior, foul and dirty, which is why they have no problem just using us for um, a food source. So these things are satanic. And if anyone has a viewpoint that, no, she's wrong, they're a helper, they're this or that, just understand that the Lord says that when these snake-based, crocodile-based, reptile-based creatures formed by Satan come among us, we will have ample opportunities to revise how we think about them and how we see them. They mind control people and they do horrible things to people. And then they blank people's minds and send them back to their homes with them unable to tell what has happened to them. And there is a prophecy, I will remember the name of it and I will link it in the comments where God showed me that after being abducted, so after people are taken and then they come back, the Lord showed me that these people go through emotional torment. So they go through a very horrible time because the information is taken away from their conscious mind what happened to them, but then they come back and the, the psyche and the body and the emotional part of us can tell, they still remember that something was done to me, something happened to me, but because we can't remember what would have happened, God says that people begin to experience emotional deterioration. They begin to withdraw from society, first of all, because if they do tell their story, they are mocked, they are ridiculed, they are made fun of, and they are gaslit so much that they don't want to talk about it anymore. But also because there's that missing chunk of information in them. I saw like when a child's tooth comes out and you know how the little one just can't stop putting their tongue there and feeling the hole. That is how the person's soul becomes. They just keep worrying and scratching at that hole of missing information. And usually they have to go through some type of therapy or if... If they are a Christian, sometimes God brings back the memory of what happened to them. And then that's when their conscious mind knows that any, something has happened to them. So on May 10th, 2020, I was just in normal Bible study and the Lord really surprised me because I was in Psalm verse, I was in Psalm 9 and I was just doing Bible study and God really shocked me with how he just began to talk about this stuff so matter of factly. He started telling me that fallen angels and aliens are going to appear all around the world in every city, town, and village in this whole world in the future. He said that every region of the earth will see them and they're going to appear simultaneously. So don't think India is going to see it first and then China see it later and then, you know, Nicaragua see it a few weeks later. No, he said they're going to appear almost as if there was a signal given and they all manifest at the same time so when i say manifest to manifest means to become visible it does not mean to be created when i was younger a pastor gave this um, definition of what manifestation is and it's so wonderful it has stayed with me all my life he said if someone is in the congregation let's say uh, a man or a woman known to the church body is in the congregation that person has always been there everybody comes to church at the same time they sit down and church starts 
So maybe let's say Deacon Frank is in the congregation and he's always been there, but people at the back and people at the sides of the church, people not sitting next to Deacon Frank may not even know he's there. But if the pastor says, let's give a round of applause for all the hard work that Deacon Frank does. Deacon Frank stands up, stand up. When Deacon Frank stands up, that is the process of manifestation. Manifestation is the realization and the visualization and being able to see and touch something that has always been there. So when these creatures manifest, they are not coming from a far, far galaxy, far away. They attempt greatly to sell this storyline to people. They attempt greatly to make it seem as, as this Bible story where Joshua and them were approached by the Gibeonites and the Gibeonites were saying, oh, we have come from such a far journey and we traveled and our shoes have gotten old and our bread has gotten moldy. But the truth was that they lived three towns away and they just didn't want Israel to destroy them. And so they came up with a ruse to pretend as if they came from a very far town and had come to the Israelites for protection. And because the Israelites fell for this trick, they were bound in covenant with the Gibeonites and they were no longer able to fight against them and eradicate them, wipe them out, destroy them as God had said that they should do to all of the people who were not part of God's chosen. And so when they manifest, it will be at the same time, meaning that they have always been here. I received a very strange and unbelievable dream from the Lord this morning. I will attempt to also make a video for that today, if I'm able, related to this issue. And they have always been here, and they will suddenly make themselves available all over the world. And God says that it will be done in such a way that nobody can tell the other person you're lying when they call and say, go outside and look up. So that means if you call someone in another country and say, oh my goodness, it's here in Milwaukee or it's here in Seattle or it's here in Paris, whoever you're calling will say, I know, I've seen them, I see them too. And so God says that they will make their presence known to us and then they will come and live with us. And this is just how the Lord told me this all these, all those years ago, this is taken directly from my journal. So I'm reading it exactly as I wrote it after he finished speaking to me, they will make their presence known to us and come and live with us. Just as God told me all those years ago, up until now, aliens will live with human beings and no rapture is going to take us away before this happens. Every last one of us will be here to see it unless we die. And so the Lord said, at first, this is how they're going to do it. They are going to live in some type of colonies that they will set up for themselves. So they will be sequestered, whether the government is going to sequester them, which is insist that they live in, let's just call it alien zones. So alien zones are going to be established. And there's certain reasons for that. The most obvious reason is the heart attack factor. Having these creatures walking around among people is definitely going to trigger unhealthy physical reactions in people. Remember Jesus' warning in Luke chapter 21 and verse 26, a scripture that I never give any rest on the master's voice. Men's hearts failing them for the things that will come upon this earth, for the things that people will see, for the things that people will told, be told. We're going to accept this now and society is going in a new direction and this is the direction living with alien creatures. People's hearts will not be able to take integrated societies immediately and most governments will understand that. So these, these creatures will live in colonies that they will set up by themselves. Please understand when I say this, they setting them up means that they have come with their own ability to build almost overnight a brand new world that they will be living in. So however they're going to do it, I've seen in many of these um, dreams that I have that these creatures possess very different types of metals, very different types of technologies. And these things are going to be visible in the beast system, such as the beautiful moldable blue steel. I'm just going to call it steel, but I don't even know if it is steel. Some kind of blue metal that they have they also have another type of metal that is white and that glows. It is sensitive to uh, touch and it, and it can be used to identify people by genetic data. So 
when they make the door handles of that metal in the future and you touch your door i saw in one dream that my door went welcome home celestial the door knew you by dna and stuff like that so um they will eventually request to live with us they will say that it is better for them to share knowledge culture and technology with us and unfortunately it is them offering these things things that people are so greedy for people always want the newest phone the newest xbox the newest everything the newest hottest different experience and so it is these offers of knowledge and especially technology that god says will be the destruction of people advanced technology from these creatures will act like a bait so that people will be so hooked that they will agree to live in blended community with these beings because of this and god said that even christians will be deceived about these creatures because their initial approach will be so helpful please go back to the transhumanist transhumanist prophecies or at least if you've watched a few of them you will remember that what i shared there is that they will put their foot forward by saying, we want to help you with aging. We want to help you with diseases. We want to help you with all these unfair sicknesses that your very weak bodies get. We want to help you with this issue of dying. Why should you die? We have ways to help you. But remember, aging is a form of death. Um, sicknesses are a form of death and actual death is death and the reason that these things come to the human being is because of the sin that adam and eve did in the garden and the punishment for that was put on all mankind it doesn't matter what religion you are when you watch this video you know that 100 percent of people die 100 percent of the time and so death is something that is common and it is explained in the bible as the punishment for sin the Bible even says that the wages of sin is death. So this aging, the creakiness and the weariness and the weakening of the body over time, or even the unfairness of sickness that comes upon youthful bodies, this is all part of the wages of sin is death. But Satan, I have shared, is going to try to climb in the, the sheepfold by offering the sheep a way to cheat death, to cheat old age. People are going to be told, it's unfair that you have this cancer. You are full of dreams. You're full of potential. We can heal this stuff. And all you need to do is pay the cheap price of your soul. And many, unfortunately, are going to agree to this. God said that um, the kindness and the way that these aliens will initially sell themselves as gods and fathers of wisdom and people who will help us rise up from our aggressive and angry and war having um, human nature into light beings people like these terms light beings star seeds light workers i just want you to know that satan is sending these creatures to switch off the lights on humanity and they will be so kind and so helpful that many people even christians god says will be fooled underneath that kindness is death because he says that as they live among us they will come to the point of eating us as food and causing havoc in human communities so christians that have no desire to stay holy christians that have no discernment christians that are easily led by the crowd and the lord said <clears throat> excuse me and i've often warned about this that even believers who are walking with the lord it is possible for them to be deceived and controlled by gray aliens so please listen closely as god was talking to me i started to see these dull silver discs that were hovering over the fields the cities and the villages and the nations of the earth god gave me a panoramic view so i was looking at the earth not over one country i was looking at the earth as if it was a map spread in front of me that spread out towards the horizon and i saw over all the countries and the nations many many uncountable numbers of these dull silver discs that were a flat a look it looked like two two plates together with a bump in the middle that is how they appeared to me and then i saw when these ships landed and the door opened and a tall i mean tall i mean very very tall and super thin gray skinned creature creatures with huge eyes like insects came out their skin had this dull look 
Their skin was also silver. Their outfit was silver, but there was a difference. Their skin has this smooth appearance, almost like, I guess, if you've ever seen your colon or just seen a piece of, of rubber tubing. But at the same time, God has shown me, sometimes the Lord will talk to me about them and he won't say much. He will just give me a lesson by showing me different types of skin that they have or different types of hands. And sometimes they, they have this pebbly look like reptile skin which is which is why i mentioned crocodiles i mentioned reptiles i mentioned snakes they have this look like the skin of reptiles and uh the the lead one that came out was wearing a comedic outfit and i will explain why so the one that came out was wearing in a top to bottom um silver jumpsuit and as they came out, the leader I saw had a cape whereby the outside of the cape was, was silver, but the inside of the cape was lined with purple. So he was wearing um, a, a purple, purple lined cape and he came out and he had a collar, a raised up collar, uh, the way men used to wear that, that high rock and roll collar like Elvis, you know, in those days. And as I looked at this thing, as they came out, you know, with this alien wearing basically what looked like John Travolta's Saturday night outfit, but it was a onesie with a zip all the way up to the neck. I literally said to the Lord, am I really seeing this? Because it looked like every parody, every kind of 1950s or 1940 alien movie you've ever seen. And I shared in, in one of the alien prophecies that aliens present themselves as anything they think we think they are. They are extremely versatile, just like Satan was when he was um, misleading Adam and Eve in the garden, just like Satan is now. Satan will always give you the sin that will hook you. Satan is not going to go to someone who doesn't care about money and try to get them to sin in the area of money. Satan gives each one the bait that they will take. And so these creatures came looking exactly the way we've always thought that they looked complete with the ship standing behind them on the, on the spindly little legs and um, this shiny outfit with a cape. And I, I just thought it was a joke, but it was happening in real time. It was a real vision. And the Lord said, these are grays. These are the famous ones that everyone thinks they know, but these are demonic creatures. But this is the popular form that they take to confuse and to captivate humanity. They are very murderous and they give off a smell. You cannot smell that smell in real life, but if a person is walking in the spirit, he can smell a gray the minute they enter an area where they are. And this prophecy contains, um, it contains information that is personal to me because God was talking to me at the time I received this two years ago. I was not planning to share this prophecy publicly, but because of the dream I had, I will share it. That is why um, pressure was put on my heart to share it and so the lord was telling me that you will walk on the in the spirit and because of that you will be able to smell these things and he said that when they integrate with humanity they're going to be able able to have access to everywhere people are so the vision that god showed me took place in the supermarket but god was telling me that you celestial will refuse to go where these things are going um, you will not even want to go to the same stores that they go to because when you smell them, you're going to turn around and walk away and refuse to enter those stores and you will not come back to the store until they have departed. Their bodies give off a spiritual stink and if a man is filled with the Holy Ghost, his very soul will hate these grays. He will not be able to abide them or inhabit the same space with them. So please understand, I'm going to share the vision that I saw briefly in, as God was telling me that I, I walk in the spirit and I'm full of the spirit and I will hate to be where they are. I saw that I came with family to the supermarket. I wanted to buy stuff. And as I entered the supermarket and started to get in, I smelt the grays. I smelt them. And the smell that they had was rotten meat and horribleness and stench and death. It may be hard to put those smells together, but that is what they have such a stinking smell that all your happiness and all your joy and all your peace will fly away like little birds that see a hurricane approaching. They stink to the high heaven, but they do not stink in the olfactory sense. You cannot smell them 
with your nose. And so as soon as I smelt it, I was so mad in the first vision that God showed me that I turned around, I spun around as soon as, you know, these automatic doors, I got in and I, and I turned around and I said, we're not, we're not shopping here. We have to leave. And my family was like, we need. And I said, we are leaving right now. I will not be in the same vicinity as these filthy things. And so we had to turn around and we went and we waited. And um, at a later time, we were able to go to the store and buy food. And so the Lord brought to me after this a dream that I had had long ago where there was a human looking woman with uh, platinum blonde hair chasing me to kill me. And I shared a bit of that in one of the prophecies. It's in one of these videos that um, these creatures came and their ships were outside. And I was telling people, do not go outside. Do not go this path. I was standing at a crossroads. There was two roads and I was standing at the crossroads and I was telling people, do not go outside. And it was right here in the US. And people were looking at me as if I was crazy. So I would say that I got about maybe 60% of the people to take the road that I was pointing to. I said, take this road and do not go outside. Do not take this road. But many people walked past me. And as they walked past me, they gave me very judgmental looks. They walked past me like, what do you know anyway? And so as people kept walking past me, I saw this tall, platinum blonde, good looking lady, you know, and she was dressed for action, you know, just a jacket and t-shirt and boots and uh, jeans, just like me. So I went to this lady to try and get her to help me to shepherd the people in the right way. I said, they're not listening. Can you please help me? They keep walking past me and going out to their doom. And as I looked at this woman, all the human emotion, all the human caring, everything that you can read in a person's face drained out of this woman's face. And there was just this blank, soulless look. And she said to me, so? And I knew in that instant, this is not a human being. And I started to run. I started to run and this woman was chasing me and this woman had a lot of supernatural abilities that I will, I will not go into but when God brought that back to me he said these are the Nordic demons they look like people but they are not they are just as bloodthirsty as the greys but much better at covering it up they are extremely social and very beautiful and because of this people will be fascinated with them and want to associate with them such to such an extent, as a result, it will be much easier for these Nordic demons, these tall, platinum blonde, very blonde, good looking demons. He said it would be much easier for them to hide among people, to blend into society because men and women will be so attracted to them and so taken with them that they will want to socialize with them. And he said that people, male and female, will greatly desire these demons as sexual partners and lovers. But he said, beware of these people. They will try to win your affection and try to get you to support their integration with humanity. He was talking to me, but they should, but they hate you and you should hate them because they are killers just like the rest. And so I've seen from God, this is just my own personal things. I've seen from God that, um, and I've shared it in the transhumanist prophecies that when these types of questions arise, should aliens live with us? Should we blend human DNA with pig? Should we really create clones and things like that? They've already done these things. But these questions are going to be brought forward as a way to say, oh, we're soft introducing humanity to them. I saw that I was a very vocal no advocate. So I was known at that time in that future for being a no advocate. And this is what God was saying to me, that these blonde aliens will very much want to win me over and people like me, people that God will raise to actually be a voice to speak on these questions, a voice of reason, a voice of warning. He said they will try to win your affection and they will try to get you to see reason, to, to support why they should be a part of humanity. But God was just telling me, always hate them because they actually hate you. And they don't hate me because I will be speaking. They will hate people like me because the spirit of God inside is going to fry creatures like this. This is why I always say to people on the master's voice, you're not a Christian because it's trendy. You're not a Christian because you need something to put on your Instagram feed with your cute little coffee and your Bible. If you're having private time with God, nobody needs to see that on social media. That's, there's a reason that it's called private time supposed to be private but 
They will hate spirit-filled people because spirit-filled people carry the blazing, living fire of the living God in us. This is why I always say to people, it is essential for you to build up your relationship with God. This is a house. God lives in the house. When God lives in the house, demons don't want to come and play with the house. Spirits don't want to attack the house. The devil doesn't want to see the house. There's a reason that we are supposed to be holy vessels that are carrying this supernatural treasure of Christ Jesus inside. So it did not surprise me when the Lord said this because he was just moving with ease from part to part to part of this prophecy. I saw these grays in the supermarket again. And when I say that these grays are tall, I know they're always showing us these diminutive two feet and three feet little things uh, in the movies, but this is not what I saw. When a gray was in the supermarket, it was so tall that its head was at the level of where the supermarket usually hangs the signs. So you know in every supermarket aisle, it will say sugar, butter, baking goods, salt, and then the next one will say ketchup, this and that, sauces. The head of the gray was as tall as those signs that hang where the supermarket um, puts its aisle sign. So the next time you go shopping, look at where that aisle sign is. Because when I was seeing in this vision, the hip of the gray came up to the top of the aisle. So here's the aisle and all the stuff is stacked. The hip of the gray was at the top shelf of the aisle and the head was up there um, in the descriptive signs. And um, they are not tiny. We are shown tiny ones, but the ones I saw were extremely tall beings, very skinny. I mean, spaghetti arms and legs, and they did not look strong, but then I saw that they didn't have to be because these creatures have extremely strong power in their minds. I saw a vision of a crowd. So there was one gray giving a speech, and behind him stood a second gray. Please understand that these things always move in crews. They will you will never see one gray walking around. It's going to be two or three or groups of more, but they do not move around solo. And so they have extremely powerful telepathic abilities and mind control abilities. A gray can manipulate reality for a human being. I shared in one video that a gray can bring you, sorry to be graphic, but it can bring you poop. It can bring you poop on a plate and manipulate your mind so that you will see your mother's famous apple pie. You will smell your mother's fam fam famous apple pie. And if it tells you to eat it, you will eat it with gusto and taste your mother's famous apple pie. They can greatly bend reality for hum human beings. They can also draw on what is in the hearts of human beings to bend reality for them. I shared long ago, months ago, that if you have a loved one that you have lost and you have not yet healed from that loss properly, a gray is able to draw out all the data of that mother, that brother, that husband that you lost and show you that person. The gray will stand in front of you. You will not see that alien. You will see your, your, loved, your, lo your loved one that you lost and that gray is able to use that depiction of false reality to tell you anything. And you will come and say, my mother told us that this and this is happening. And she told us of a safe place to go. It is not a safe place to go. The first thing that you should know is that the dead know nothing. This is what the Bible says. It is appointed to man to die once. The dead know nothing. The Bible shows them in the Psalms as they are in a place of silence, darkness. That is the grave. Anyone comes back to you and starts talking to you, you don't rebuke that thing with the name of Jesus. You don't rebuke that thing in the fire of the Lord. Just know that in these times, the power that these creatures have can bend reality and also control people in the mind. So I saw this gray giving a speech and behind him a second gray was standing and he had a Wi-Fi signal emitting from his head. So he was like this behind the first gray. He just stood like this. And there was the famous Wi-Fi signal. You know how it goes like this in widening bands. The Wi-Fi signal was coming from the gray's head. And as it came from the gray's head, it made this kind of loop over the entire crowd, the entire city. It was curled as if 
a wormhole was about to open. And through that thought wave, through those waves that were coming from the mind of one gray, a large crowd of people in a city listened to the first gray talking. And what was coming out, the signal was telling everyone to like this speech and to agree with everything that was being said. That is what I saw. Therefore, as the first gray was speaking, all the people smiled and they nodded in agreement and they were clapping enthusiastically from time to time. But yet I saw that they were clapping for something they didn't even understand and they would not remember later. I also saw them whenever the gray extended, they either have three fingers or four. I put a picture on the prophecies for people to understand. Whenever they extended those three fingers or those four fingers towards people, people froze in place. They had the ability to physically freeze the body and blank out the mind. You would be standing there like a toy. And even though your eyes are working and your ears are working, you would record no data through the eyes. You would hear no data through the ears. And so grays could freeze people on command even a full room of people and they would just walk in and lift the hand and all the people became frozen and then the grays could do whatever they wanted i didn't see the things that they did but god showed me sort of in the spirit that they were very busy all over the society and they greatly had the ability to control and run society because they were able to freeze people. After people woke up, they were unharmed, but they could not remember anything. So if the cops came and said, but you guys will all hear your eyewitnesses, what happened? Not a single person would be able to give information to the cops. And I asked God and I said, whoa, Lord, where, where, who's going to live with these creatures? You know, where, where are people going to go? Do you have a place? And the Lord said, yes, humanity that doesn't want to live with them will have to relocate to the outer areas of civilization. So I'm always talking about this place that I see in dreams. You basically can call it the fringes. You can call it whatever. It's a place where society is not really developed, where you have to rely on your ability to farm and your ability to build a fire and that type of thing. Because in such areas, they were not built up so much with us living there in mind. And so God showed me that sometimes people even moved to the places where the greys, to the places where the greys initially used to live. People who didn't want to live with greys drew away from society and went to live in the fringes and went to live in the outer, the outer lands. Let's just call it that. And the greys migrated into the places where people were living. So this is not only in cities, this is all over the world. So wherever people congregate, even in villages, the greys went there to live with people. And the Lord showed me that the Nords, I'll just call them the Nords, that's how he said, the Nords, this is the blonde aliens, will also integrate with society and they will be very successful at integrating with humanity. But he said some of the other creatures that will come will be successful too. I am telling you that women are going to be dating things that are out of this world. I'm saying it so that when it happens, no one will say that they never heard it before. Men are going to be walking around with what should not be mentioned. These mermaids are going to put on their best two-legged games and take away males from human women. The prophecies that God gives me are so concerning that there will be less and less childbirth because female wombs are going to be shut down and things like that. And so I was asking the Lord, Father, when will this happen? But he didn't really give me an answer. And personally, I will not usually ask the Lord to give me a time frame because I am not bothered with time frames. When I hear the different things that the Lord is giving in prophecy, I know that I'm not going to put on my muscles and fight the Russians, the Chinese, the reanime, and all the other things that I cover. I know that prophecy is coming to tell me a few limited and important things. Make sure your life is pure, celestial. Make sure that you live in such a way that you are pleasing to God, that the Lord is pleased to care for you. The Lord is pleased to lift you up on his shoulders and carry you through these things. So it is extremely rare that I will ask the Lord about anything concerning time because all that is important now is for me to be the best at the life that I am living for Jesus now. I know that the majority of people do not share this view, but this is my view. But in this case, I did ask him and he did not give me a settled answer or time. He only said, this will happen. You will see it and you will live through it. 
they will soon start to disclose alien existence on the mainstream media just as you saw in the other dream what is this other dream it is called hiding among us aliens in plain sight and in that dream god showed me that this media this american government is going to confess that not only have there been aliens among us, but that they have been living among us and that the government has been dealing with them, trafficking with them, protecting them in what the Lord called alien witness protection programs. This is not something that is going to happen. I am speaking of a past, past, past tense, tense thing that has already happened. There are aliens that live in this nation that look exactly like people and they are allowed to integrate. They are allowed to carry ID. They have families. They have married people. They have brought forth their kind out of human wombs. Men have slept with them and those in human wombs have brought forth the kind of the woman, not the kind of the human man. They have businesses. They are integrated with society. I will link that dream in the description hiding among us hiding in plain sight aliens among us god said that america runs a witness protection program for aliens and that the very dangerous ones because there are aliens that are not easy to see there are aliens that are strange and dangerous he said that they have expressed wishes to harm people and so they have to be kept in underground underground facilities i've seen these facilities they're just all gray cement and weird unhappy lighting and they have creatures that they they this government not government as in this present administration just the u.s government the rulership have made integrated wolf creatures that i saw with sad human eyes total wolf body wolf face and yet you look at the eyes of the creature it is a human being and you can feel the sadness in the creature because the creature has been given the wolf has been stressed out by being given a human mind and human feelings and now the wolf is sad the wolf doesn't want to be in captivity the wolf wants to be outside living and probably having a coffee or whatever it is that a human like wolf wants to do but um these are some of the things and god says that they will disclose all this in the media, but he says that the way they will do it is from a lying posture. They will act as if this information is brand new to them and they will say, and here's what he said, America, we're on your side. We're following this story. We're working as hard as we can. We're doing the best that we can to bring you the coverage as we discover more about these things. As we get the news, you'll get it. So stay with us america and trust us to get you through this and this is just lies upon lies upon lies if you're an american citizen and you think that this government is giving you the truth about anything and when i say government i'm talking all the way back to when mr kennedy passed away then you are extremely deceived for this is what the lord said i the lord say to you presidents long dead have known about this this is how far back it goes so this alien storyline, this alien reveal, it has been administration after administration after administration that has known about this. And he says it is part of America's history, part of her heritage of pride and poor decisions. America has always trafficked with these demonic creatures. And that is why the destruction and the carnage that they cause here will be worse than in any other nation. Creatures are going to come to this country and marry people. It's going to be celebrated. It's going to be allowed. If we think that um, same love is an issue, just wait until unsane love gets to have its day. And so this is end times prophecy, which in another way you can just say prophecy about the times that they never told you about in church. One day, the mystery of lawlessness and the mystery of iniquity will not be a mystery anymore. They'll be standing in the grocery line with us, buying bread that they're going to pretend to eat when in truth they eat human flesh. And so understand that the word of God is mighty to save. People ask about these various prophecies. What should we do? How should we prepare? How did people in the old days prepare against the Philistines? How did people in the old days prepare against the dragons and the Nephilim? The word of God is mighty to save. 
There is only one sword that will cut to the cutting of bone and marrow. There is only one shield that can quench all the darts of Satan. There is only one helmet that you are to put on your mind. Now you understand why the 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 armor of God is so important because the helmet of salvation when you keep it on your mind it not only protects against the insane ideas that will come from the mouth of men but it will also protect against demonic information and all kinds of waves that will be in the air yes it's 2022 you may stare at me now and think very unbalanced is she and this poor girl but I'm sitting here in the prescient knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sitting here with the fact that God loves me enough to warn me and loves people enough to warn them. So all I will say is let the information come forth and let the future be the determinant of who spoke true and who did not. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Thank you for being with me. Please share these um, Please share these videos. Please like the videos. And there are other there are other prophecies at the bottom of the post. And here, by the grace of the Lord, is the image that I found exactly what I was looking at. God is so good to always provide these for me. He is the one who runs the master's voice. Um, he is the one who has kept me going all these years. I started receiving this information from the Lord in 2012. And he is still talking to me and revealing it now. So I said that at the end, I will just share a little bit about how God began awakening, awakening me to these things. And this happened a long time ago. So this would have been maybe 2010 or 2011. And it happened in the movie Transformers Part 2. I went with friends of mine, all Christians. We went to see this movie. We're so excited. Of course, it's a summer movie. Who wouldn't be? And we had already seen Part 1. And so a few years later, Transformers Part 2 came out. But as I was watching this movie, I began to get this really, this, this anger building up in me. I was sick of listening to these evil Transformers talking about how they were going to take over the world and crush the humans and destroy the humans. And, you know, you've heard these things in movies a thousand times, but I don't think that we understand how desensitized we are. So I was getting angrier hearing this. And then when the good guys showed up and began to give help and everything, I got even angrier because I began to feel like I am the creation of God. Human beings are the apex of God's creation. There's nothing higher than us. So why is it that these movies, when they come out, they always depict us as small as ants and pointless and irrelevant. And we need evil ones to come and rule us. And then we need good ones to come and save us. And we're just there in the middle, uh, the helper of the good aliens as they fight the bad aliens. And power is fighting as power. And we're just in the middle like, oh, I hope we make it. And I, I became angry. I think about 20 minutes or 30 minutes into the movie, I, I got sick and frustrated and I just told my friends you know um, I'm gonna step out and they just thought I was going to get condiments you know but I walked away I went into the waiting room and I sat there and I read a book and this movie was like two and a half hours long uh, but I did not come back in and they were texting me where are you you're missing the good parts and I was thinking I am missing nothing and from that time whatever work that God had done in my heart between the first movie and the second movie whenever I would sit in front of these so-called Avengers so-called X-Men I also remember being extremely irritated um, a few years later or a short while later when this X-Men came out, the one that has a big hole and they excavate some kind of greenish Egyptian mummy that just kept talking and talking and talking. And I realized that this is the voice of Satan. Satan has a voice. Satan doesn't come and go, I am Satan. Satan has a voice that is in the news. It is in the newspapers. It is at many of the channels that people go to because people have the discernment of baby flies that have not even developed. So people go and watch all sorts of things. And all those things are arrows that penetrate the mind and fill the mind with all sorts of suppositions and thoughts and things like that. And this is why when people come to a place like this, and I'm speaking about deadly creatures that kill, the stuff that has gone into their minds makes them ask questions like, oh, but can hybrids be saved, you know, if you pray for them? And can we baptize zombies and things like that? If people change to zombies, if we baptize them, this mindset, it didn't drop out of the sky. It has been carefully cultivated over many years in the lives of many of you through what I am calling the voice of Satan. Satan has instructed the people of this nation to love what is unholy and to be bored by what is holy. 
Holy things bore Americans. Righteous things bore Americans. People come and they think that there's this huge, huge community of righteous people. And you couldn't be more wrong. When God shows me this country, the Christian community is like a dot. It is like tiny little dots of light flickering in a huge black mass. And so this is, this is what feeds some of the desperation in us. Because we think oh, oh, we're, we're enough to pray and we're enough to, to change the course of things. And God, God will never relent concerning what he says. Because those who love aliens and those who love demigods and those who love Avengers and those who are hoping and praying and wishing that they had Nephilim superpowers, they outnumber us by a million to one. And so there, there's no hope. If anything, the, and I'm not saying there's no hope for Christianity. Not, that is not at all what I'm saying because I know there's just people with a notepad out there ready to misquote me in a thousand different mental newspapers. Please listen. The righteousness that we are dealing with here in a country like this one is personal righteousness that saves. So it may protect you and it may cover you. And certainly when we pray, God will hear and God will do whatever God will do to protect his own. But the idea that this sinking ship is going to be pulled out of the depth when the fact is that national repentance is not something that has ever happened. When these fiery preachers of righteousness that God raised up in America to warn her about what would happen to her, they may not have been talking about aliens and Nephilim, but they told America that she would burn they told America that she would fall to her enemies, that she would be taken in a yoke of captivity, and that this nation was going to be set on fire. National repentance did not break out in those days when those men and those women were raising up their voices like loud trumpets. So at this time, at our most slothful, our most selfish, our most unclean, our most fornicating, and cross-dressing and blurring the lines and letting men jump into the pool and swim as girls. It is time that we stop holding on to falsehood and fallacy. This is Celestial with the Master's Voice. Thank you for being with me. You can find everything about this channel by clicking the drop-down menu. Until I see you again, God bless you. Goodbye.